All right, let's move into our last team in the NFC West. We have the Seattle Seahawks. And our narrative is we don't know what the narrative is because we sat here for probably about five, six minutes going back and forth. And we just can't decide what this year is supposed to be for the Seattle Seahawks. Like, okay, you have a new coaching staff, right? You have a kind of a new GM. I mean, not really because Pete Carroll was making the final decisions pretty much on a lot of personnel decisions, but he's been there before. Like, I don't know. Like, the GM's been there, so... You know, you have a new offensive coordinator. You knew you have a new head coach. Are you, you know, are you gonna really invest in Geno? Tyler Lockett's getting older. They have young pieces on defense. I just feel like there's so much in flux for the Seahawks that it's like this season kind of needs to play out a little bit before we're able to really see like what this year is supposed to be for the Seahawks. They let both their safeties go. Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs, they're both with the Titans now. You have Kenneth Walker, who, you know, is really good, but I don't know if he was used to his highest potential last year. And, you know, you could see JSN take that next step this year. You have Byron Murphy. It's just, they're so all over the place. I don't even know, like, what to expect in terms of, you know, the Seahawks should be a decent team. They have pieces, but in terms of what they're trying to accomplish this year, I really don't know. No, and like... You know, I, I guess I want to start Seahawks fans. Do you guys feel special? You guys are the one team we couldn't come up with a narrative with. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> All right. Jokes aside, you know, look, here's the let's like I, I got a lot to say. So I'm gonna try to wrap it into a small thing. The first thing that really confused me about this this offseason here from the Seahawks is and again, look, from the perspective of GM sometimes don't want to spend draft picks there, there are some organizations that do, just don't like taking flyers, right? And the Seahawks must have said to themselves, I don't want to spend a fifth, sixth, or a seventh on a flyer in, in talking in my, let me specify, a quarterback flyer, right? Like a guy like, okay, he definitely has some upside and we, we could get him in the building and let's try it out. Kind of like they did with Russ. Now, even though Russ was more of a mid-round flyer, and I'm referring to more of a late-round flyer, I am relatively surprised that the Seahawks didn't say, you know what? Let's get a Joe Milton in the building, right? Let's get, you know, let's get a Spencer Rattler in the building. Let's let's just kind of feel out how a young guy, a, a, fre a real fresh blood is going to look coming straight from college here. Give him some time to develop. I am really surprised they didn't go that route because I get it, right? Uh, if you're a Seahawks fan, you're saying, well, we got Sam Howell. Well, we saw it, Sam Howell. He, he's uh, like we were saying, I said about a few other players earlier, definition of hot and cold, right? Like when he's hot, he's real hot. But when he's cold, he's like, yo, he can't be playing in this game. He's going to ruin the game cold. So if he doesn't get out of that this year, he's probably going to lock himself into being kind of a perennial backup kind of quarterback. And not there's anything wrong with that. If that ends up being Sam Howell's ceiling, so be it, right? But to the point of the Seahawks future, if Geno keeps getting older, Sam Howell is not the guy. De Devon Witherspoon is going to be going in then next year into his third year on a contract where we see how that DB market is rising. Uh, Boye Mafe, you're going to be due to pay in a year after that. Um, all, all, I mean, just all over the board, I guess, you're going to be having to pay a lot of young guys, right? Like, you know, you, you Tyler, like to your point, Tyler Lockett's getting older. What do you can do with Tyler Lockett? Uh, the O-line is very contingent on Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas kind of getting back to like that rookie year form. Cause if they can't this year, Hunter, this whole line minus Connor Williams, but the problem with Connor Williams too, is it's like Connor Williams. Bad, is he the bad same Connor injury. Williams yeah. Before the injury. So, and if kind of, if it's not same Connor Williams, the Seahawks could truly be like one of the very few teams that has like nothing figured out on the O line. And, and again, Seahawks fans, I don't want that to be the case. I was a big Charles Cross truther. Really loved the way he played his rookie year. Surprised that it was a regression last year. We can't have another year of that. We certainly can't have another year of that with Abraham Lucas, especially with how talented that this young receiving core is. JSN, DK Metcalf, you got to give him time to get open. You got to give him time to develop. That's why, Seahawks fans, I hope we laid it out as, as, as much as possible why it's so complicated to evaluate your guys' team. Because you guys are just a tough evaluation. You, you're, the, you're the definition of 
you know, they could sneak their way into the playoffs and have a really successful year and, and, and surprise a lot of people, hit them with some uppercuts, or they could get knocked out in the first round. I mean, they, they're, they're so, like, they're such an anomaly of a team. I do want to go kind of back at what you said regardless about or, or regarding, like, taking a quarterback later in the rounds. I think that's what it was with Sam Howell. I think that's why they traded, like, a third for him. I think that was, you know – that was their flyer. Like, I feel like they saw something in Sam Howell that, I mean, that they, they, they think he can maybe be the future. With that being said, though, uh, talking about your the old line, it feels like very, very, like, pieced together. Lake and Tomlinson, Connor Williams, right? So, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, I think where my, not, I don't want to say issue, but my confusion comes for the Seahawks is, I'm a very big believer in if you don't believe this is the team that's going to take you to the Super Bowl and you're kind of a new regime, you might as well just kind of tear it down a little bit, you know? Like, you move what you can. Like, But Seattle has been one of those teams kind of like the Steelers that they just, and, and the Saints recently, where they're just like, let's be good enough to stay relevant, right? And I do think Pete Carroll that year with Geno really thought that they could compete, and they did. They did really compete, but that didn't last. And I am I almost feel like maybe this year with the Seattle Seahawks is kind of similar to what we were talking about with the Denver Broncos, where it's kind of like, let's see what we have, right? And then we can make our decisions because – the team is too good to like stink like really badly, you know? And it's like maybe they're going to try out some new players and new spots and kind of see what's going to work the best and kind of go from there. Um, I just think it's one of those like in flux seasons for the Seahawks where it's like, let's see what we have. Let's address in the off season and kind of go from there because it's like, okay, realistically, like, Gino is 33. How long do you expect him to be your quarterback of the future? And that's not, I hate saying that because I, I really like to see Gino succeed, especially after all he's been through in his career. But with that being said, like we also have to be realistic. And, you know, in since 2013, he's only had three 3,000 yard seasons, right? And I mean, Last year or two years ago it was four forty two hundred. Last year was thirty six hundred. So it has been of recent that two of his three seasons came, but I just I don't know. Like okay, let's say you get two years down the line, right? He's not gonna and you. I I don't know. Like I just think the Seahawks are too far away to be Super Bowl contenders. Where Geno can take you to that promised land, but I do think. Maybe in those years, if Sam Howell is not the guy, they're trying to develop a guy to kind of take his spot. And I think, you know, their window to win a Super Bowl is really kind of just really, I feel like really at the start. Like this is where it's like you're figuring out what you have and going forward, you can just kind of like move what you need to move and kind of rebuild from there. I think that's it's a big assessing year for Mike McDonald. No, absolutely. And like, you know, and you're spot on. Like, I think if anything, that's kind of the point. Like Seahawks fans, you know, you might think we're we're railing on you and making it sound like it's bad. It's all bad. No, actually, it's it's exactly what Hunter said. It, very, very more than likely, it is the start of opening the Super Bowl window. And sometimes when you when you're cracking that window open, maybe sometimes you gotta get the crowbar. It's a little, it's a little ugly. But you know what I mean? That's kind of the situation you guys are in now. You're you're jamming that crowbar. You're figuring it out. And you guys are going to crack that Super Bowl window sometime soon. It's just the dust is settling. You guys are figuring out who you're going to hold on to and who you're going to ship out. I think that's kind of the perfect way to assess the situation right now, Hunter. 100%. Any last thoughts before we wrap up the team preview series? You know, final thoughts, just the, the West divisions. Just, just a lot going on. Just a lot going on in the, in the West Division. A lot of that's for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you don't know ball and want to know ball, be sure to subscribe. Leave a like. Let us know in the comments who you think will win the NFC West. The Los Angeles Rams. Um, that's the narrative I'm going to ride this year. But let us know in the comments if you agree, disagree. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a really fun series. We'll do it next year. Maybe switch it up a little bit on how we do it. But... 
we are so excited to get the season underway. We'll have more and more content as, you know, we get closer to the season and we'll have, you know, weekly videos, daily videos once the season starts. And I'm so excited. It is so fun. And today is the opening of preseason week one. And that's what I'm going to go watch after I end this recording. So. Awesome. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you.